Today is April 4th. It's the Sabbath day. We left off talking about spiritual Judah and carnal Judah and how the Holy Scriptures show in prophecy that the spiritual blessings of, of Judah, spiritual Judah in the end, they would be tied to Christ. And the difference between carnal Judah, those in the religion of Judaism, which have denied Christ, and again, this is not at all about talking about certain people groups being better or worse than anybody else. We're all brothers and sisters, but in the end, we must understand that people are deceived by false religion. God calls it Babylon. It's confusion. It's not in accordance with his law and his will. And it is filled with spiritual fornication and adultery against his commands and his instructions. So false religion is what deceives people. And I have nothing but love for all people, no matter where they are from, and I, I, my heart is for all people to forsake confusion, come out of Babylon, and listen to God, Yehovah, and His Son, Yeshua, the Messiah, the true Messiah. Because we are in a time now, we are in a time now, where God is going to take his vengeance on those who do not use his name properly and that is coming very close in world events today we're going to talk about that today what's going on with all this coronavirus situation how this all falls right into prophecy and it might not be so obvious at first. You know, people people look at the Bible and, and they see scriptures about plagues and different things like that. And uh, it's really not about that at all in this time. A lot of those things about plagues are spiritual not physical, about physical viruses that come out of nowhere all of a sudden, but rather spiritual plagues that are in certain groups that, that people are led astray by things that are false, famine, spiritual famine and plague. And it is said of spiritual Judah that he will have wine and milk in the end time. He will be bound to Christ, the choice vine. The book of Revelation we see when it comes to spiritual famine. Hurt not the wine and the oil. So God's people who have his spirit who obey him are preserved in times of great spiritual famine and pestilence and we are in a time of sp spiritual famine and pestilence and it is going to get worse a lot worse before it gets better and these physical things that are terrifying people today in this world, you know, we are not to be conformed to this world. We have a different mind than this world. But we see the, the mind of the world changing and being manipulated today. We find this in Scripture the end time. <clears throat> I'm going to 
to start out in Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is Jehovah, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of your majesty and of your wondrous works, and men shall speak of the might of your terrible acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait on you, and you give them their meat in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all them that call on him, and all that call on him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak of the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. God reigns supreme. Jehovah reigns supreme. And as I have been bringing forward these last three and a half going on four years now, in this time, God will bring his people through fire, great, great fire, to try them and test them and see where they are at. And he will take vengeance on those who use his name improperly. And God has always brought this about by mankind. We see in, let's see here, bear with me a sec. <clears throat> Second Samuel Chapter Seven
speaking of Solomon. Starting in verse 8, Now therefore so shall you say unto my servant David, Thus says Jehovah of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be the ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with you wheresoever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies out of your sight, and have made you a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused them to rest from all their enemies, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. And when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever, according to all these words and according to all the vision. So did Nathan speak unto David. Genesis 49 The throne of David The key of David King of Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and to him the gathering of the people be. So again, spiritual Judah in Christ, tied to the vine, the choice vine, verse 11, washed in the blood of Christ. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk true prophecy and true doctrine and that is what we are going to talk about now because in the end this is how all people will be known people will be tried to see if they are truly tied to the vine by spiritual fire in this end time what is happening right now <clears throat> in this world we see this coronavirus taking over the whole world in every nation governments are telling their people to stay at home sit in front of your television and be afraid be very afraid but don't be afraid but yes be very afraid and as always fear is a great catalyst to control people fear is control you know fear leads people to war When people are lied to about going to war, fear is used 
is a great motivator. There is no fear in Yehovah for his people. And his people can see the truth of the matter. We talked about this kingdom of the beast from time to time. And what the true prophecy of the book of Revelation really means. Prophecies of Daniel as well. How it all ties together and makes one complete picture. We talk about how this kingdom is a lying kingdom. It is a kingdom that gets its power from the dragon, Satan the devil, who is the father of lies. Now, again, we're in a world today where people have gone to school to be educated very young. And they have an education, all right, an education of this world. That is the complete opposite in many ways of what God gives. People have been trained in lies across the board to not even know the earth they stand on. And when you really understand that, then you can see clearly many things that are done. See them all with open eyes. Now, I want to read a quote, and I've read this quote from time to time from Adolf Hitler. And it's not just him, but many other people have said similar things over, the, over time about ruling people and how it's done. And in this quote, it's called The Big Lie. And he says that in the big lie, there's always a certain force of credibility so that people will believe the lie, in other words, because the broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature, Emo emotional nature than consciously or voluntarily. So as I just said, people, when they have their emotions stirred up, they can be made to do many things, many, many things, that they are not even consciously aware that they are being manipulated because of emotion. If you can get hold of people emotionally, then you can control them. And he says, thus in the primitive simplicity of their minds, they more readily fall victim to the big lie than the small lie. And oh boy, is that true. There is enormous, enormous lies in this last generation. Enormous lies. Again, the creation itself and how that all works and what God says and what this world shows people. Two very vastly different things. And people do not know up from down. Everything has been turned upside down. Black is white, cold is hot in this generation. People have been taught and educated in false ways so that they do not know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong. 
And this is on a worldwide scale in this generation. So he says, they fall victim to the big lie than the small lie, since they themselves often tell small lies in little matters, but would be ashamed to resort to large-scale falsehoods. And it would never come into their heads to fabricate colossal untruths. Colossal untruths. And they would not believe that others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. So basically, the bigger the lie, the less people would believe it's possible to achieve such a thing. People would say to themselves, that cannot be. Nobody would do such a thing. Nobody would dare fool millions and millions and millions of people. And so, surely, surely people would catch on. Surely people would know. Cannot be. Well, Satan the devil, the father of lies, is the god of this age. He is the dragon, the father of lies, and the and it says in the book of Revelation that he deceives the whole world. Who are you? It is only the truth that will set you free in this life. And Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, gives his people the truth and sets, him for, sets them free from the, the lies of this world. And we see that there are people in this world, and we went over it last time, and I suggest if you haven't listened to the last few Bible studies on carnal Judah and spiritual Judah that I that you should go back and listen to those for this because there are people in this world who follow as always there is nothing new under the sun we talked about Edom Moab Ammon you know what these people are in the end as well and again, as always, it has to do with what you do, what you believe, not flesh and blood, but what you practice in life. And there are people that practice in this world, in this current time, they worship Molech. They worship different gods from way back that are false gods. That, that are war gods. This is why there is so much war. That are gods to sacrifice to. Human sacrifice. There is nothing new under the sun. These things are done today. And it is an abomination to God. And those who partake in such things. Will be destroyed in the end. And you out there. If you partake in such things, your end is death. We must understand the lies that have been perpetrated on mankind, the false gods that are worshipped till this day, that are causing destruction, destruction on the earth, murder, abortion, all kinds of things in the name of a progressive society <laughs> well now things are changing things are changing and all those who will not who do not love the truth in the end will believe great lies big lies and those lies will be their destruction in the end will be their destruction in the end. 
Now, just to finish up this quote here, he says, it would never come into their heads, the heads of most people, to fabricate colossal untruths, and they would not believe that others would do so, even though the facts which prove this to be is brought clearly to their minds, they will still doubt and waver and will continue to think that there may be some other explanation. For the grossly impudent lie always leaves traces behind it, even after it has been nailed down a fact which is known to all expert liars in this world and to all who conspire together in the art of lying. What a quote. That's a mouthful there. And you better understand it. The power of lies to distort the mind of people is a very serious thing. No lie is of the truth. Lies distort the mind and destroy people. Lies and spirit and murder go hand in hand, spiritually. It says of Satan that he was a murderer from the beginning. He did not abide in the truth. I want to tell, talk to you for a second about another another man who was a Freemason and a Satanist, Aleister Crowley, who practiced ritual magic. He had a religion called Thelema. And his definition of magic, that's M-A-G-I-C-K, is a term used to show and differentiate the occult, the hidden, from performance magic, M-A-G-I-C, and is defined as the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Now, change, we are in a time of great change. This man, Crowley, and his teachings, followed by many, many people out there, many, many people, and his traces, the traces of his stench have been all throughout Freemasonry, Hollywood, the music industry, all things that people look to for guidance in this, this world at this time. And there's a lot of people out there that are practicing some not very good things for them in their life. And that will be their destruction in the end. But it's important to understand that these things exist in the world. And it is important to understand what is going on now because great change is happening right now. Great change. And it will not go back to the way it was after this. Something different is coming. And it is something that is in prophecy. Now we've talked about the beast kingdom and the seven heads and ten horns that are on the beast and how this is the carnally minded man, the empires of man throughout 6,000 years 
it is man without God. It is man being influenced by powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, that has brought about the heads of the beast. From way, way back, before the flood, up until our time today, And I want to look at the definition of corona. The corona, meaning crown in Latin. Latin, the language of Rome, the Roman Empire, derived from the ancient Greek. Greece was the empire that was before Rome. The whole world was ruled by that empire. The Greeks and the Macedonians, especially under Alexander the Great, that was before the Roman Empire. This word here, from the ancient Greek, corone, meaning garland or wreath, It's also given the definition as an aura of plasma that surrounds the sun and other stars. So a crown, this coronavirus spreading throughout the earth here in every nation, changing the way people think about the world they live in and we see many in government and in Hollywood and in other areas of entertainment people are getting this coronavirus and people are talking about it on television all the time 24 7 non-stop what is behind this There is a lot more to this than meets the eye. Because this is the coronation ceremony of the beast. Coronation. The ceremony of crowning royalty. A sovereign. crowning, enthronement, anointing, some synonyms there, and it's all going in this direction in this time, and this will not end anytime soon, and this will go on for months and months, this ritual, this ceremony, this indoctrination, this new education. That people are being manipulated in. Being re-educated on a worldwide scale. You see here with this corona. Time to time I've showed you the United Nations flag. The true nature of the world broken up into 33 sections surrounded by the Roman laurel leaf which is the crown of the Caesars it was the crown of the Caesars and this is the power in plain sight that rules the world today this is the ten that came out of Rome and this is major in prophecy because at this time world government is coming into birth it is a crowning ceremony it is an initiation into a new kingdom and that will be the last kingdom before the return of Jesus Christ and that kingdom 
will cause a falling away from Christ before the end because of great big lies Matthew 10:16 Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. A word on viruses. I have looked into these things for a long time now. Holistic healing, natural remedies, I even worked in that field for a while. And it is not common knowledge or understanding because people have been educated a certain way by this medical system. But viruses and bacteria are actually made inside your body to kick out toxins. to get rid of toxins and a cold or a flu is the literal process of getting rid of those toxins in other words the virus and the bacteria that your body itself creates is not the enemy but is helping the body get rid of what should not be there it is not something that is spread person to person unless somebody basically coughs on you or sneezes on you and then that same detoxification process you will have to go through yourself these things are not taught in school to people they are unknown because there is no money in it can't sell people drugs and vaccines by teaching people natural ways and the way the body really works so I'm not here to give a health lesson but I suggest you look into these things and understand what is really going on behind this worldwide shutdown because a new system is going to come out of this worldwide shutdown and things are never going to be the same after this and it is going to be an astonishment to all those that dwell on the earth when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Let's just read that. Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast that you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is I want to go to Revelation 13 And I saw, verse 3, one of its heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. 
And they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? When the world comes together, there will be no war. It's part of the end time. It's part of the, the kingdom that destroys by peace. As it says in Daniel. All the world wandered after the beast. What is that word there? They marveled. Strong's 2296. So Madzo. To be amazed. I.e. astonished out of one senses. Awestruck. Wondering greatly. To regard with amazement. Admire, marvel, wonder, have an admiration. So all those whose names are not written in the book of life, when they see this beast come into power, again, this kingdom, this end time kingdom, the world as a whole will be astonished by the situation and they will follow it willingly and be deceived by it must understand that Revelation 17 And the angel said to me, verse 7, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Yeshua the Messiah said it would be as the days of Noah when he returns. And in the days of Noah, it was a one world kingdom that was away from God. Everyone corrupted their way before God, it says. All flesh was corrupted. Great lies existed in that time that corrupted people. And people fell away from God. And so it is in this time, just the same in this end. Great lies cause a falling away from the truth. And all those who do not love the truth will believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter two and then shall that wicked be revealed. This is the spirit, the spirit that comes out of the bottomless pit that infects the whole world. Been talking about this. For a long time now. 
and it is known in people by what they follow and do. The mystery of iniquity. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Truth. The sword of truth. The word of God. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all delusion of unrighteousness, that is breaking the law, breaking the commandments of God, unrighteousness. Psalm 119, all thine commandments are righteousness. All thine instruction is righteousness. And with all delusion of unrighteousness, sin, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, for this cause, they do not receive the truth. God himself, Jehovah, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that all might be judged who believe not the truth. But had pleasure in sin, unrighteousness, breaking the law, lawlessness. Away with you, you workers of lawlessness. Revelation 17. For God, verse 17, has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Give their kingdom to the beast. This is all God's will and in prophecy what is happening in our time and it is it is on his people. And who will be able to stand in this day? Verse 9, chapter 17. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Mountains are represented, representative of governments. They are kingdoms. They are empires. They are not, it is not talking about seven physical hills somewhere in the world. No, 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 no. Not at all. It's talking about a bigger picture than that. Much bigger. The big picture. Seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Babylon, confusion, has always sat on these empires. False religion has always been the force on top of these empires. Confusion. And there are seven kings. Mentioned it's a kingdom of man, but it is also a spiritual hierarchy. Above that, remember, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this age. Spiritual wickedness in high places so there is a spiritual hierarchy to all these empires of man from the very beginning 
That is what the beast system is. It's carnally minded man without the, God, the spirit of God that has been led by wickedness. Wicked spirits. The, the religious confusion of all these empires of mankind throughout 6,000 years. Five are fallen. One is. Now, in the time that John wrote this book, one is, the one that was ruling, the empire of man that was ruling, and the spiritual hierarchy that was above it, was the Roman Empire. That is the empire that ruled the world in that time. Before that happened, five empires fell already. The Greeks and the Macedonians ruled the entire world before the Roman Empire. Before that was the Persians and the Medes. And in that kingdom, when the children of Judah were allowed to go back to the land and rebuild the temple, when King Cyrus let the children of Judah leave Babylon, that empire took over from Babylon, which was before it. And that is the, the Babylonian Empire brought the children of Judah into that captivity for their disobedience to God. For 70 years, before Babylon became prominent, you have the kingdom of Egypt. Now we're counting backwards here from Rome, the sixth. So you have before Rome, Greece, then the Medes and the Persians, then Babylon, then Egypt. And the, the kingdom before that was the pre-flood kingdom. The kingdom that existed before the flood, the one world kingdom. Now these five have fallen already they existed they came to power they ruled for their time and they fell now the sixth head was Rome one is when it says one is let's look at that in the Greek it means it's current to the time period The word is I me I exist I am being existence in the present tense so John was told in his time this mystery of this beast and that the, the, the power in the world that was ruling at that time was the Roman Empire with all its spiritual harlotries and Babylonian mysticism and religion behind it. And he says, the other has not yet come. And I'm here to tell you, in our generation, this is the generation that is before the return of Jesus Christ, that seventh head of the beast has come and now it is solidifying its power. It is being crowned in the coronation ceremony that brings forth the last kingdom. And as in the time of Daniel when he saw the changeover 
from the Babylonian Empire to the Persian Empire, we also see this changeover in our day. And when it does change in the coming short time, the whole world will be astonished. And it will be a great counterfeit, as I have spoken about. A great counterfeit kingdom where man will think the meaning of life has been revealed. But he has forsaken his maker. And in that day he will be led to the slaughter. Five are fallen, one is, the other is not yet come, and when he comes he must continue a short space. That is the generation we live in. It is a short time, one generation. These kingdoms before ruled for many generations, multiple generations, some of them, most of them. But this last one rules for a short space. It is a over the course of an entire generation. And it transforms the world and manipulates the world the way people think to follow it in lies, in many lies. And the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition so it is mentioned here there is seven but there's also this eighth what is this eighth it is the first kingdom the pre-flood spirit that comes out of the pit and goes into perdition and it brings the entire world together again just like at the tower of babel that was after the flood but there is a reason certain people went that down that path and this same spirit is behind what is going on this in this world today and this will all lead i'm telling you this is all here in prophecy will all lead to this the ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet. They have not been crowned yet. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. One hour with the beast. These have one mind one purpose behind it and shall give their power and strength to the beast these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful psalm 2 Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against Jehovah and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. They want to do away with Christ. They want to do away with Christ for something else. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim Jehovah's decree. He said to me, you are my son. 
Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will give you the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve Jehovah with fear. Celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry. And your way, and your way, will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all they who take refuge in him. Revelation 17, 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the horse sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and the ten horns which you saw on the beast these shall hate the whore. This is God's judgment on whoredoms, prostitutions, those who take his name in vain, those who use his name, but not in truth. These shall hate the whore. This is the ten kings. This is judgment on Christianity of this world, basically. And it will come to pass because it is God's will. So you better be right with God in this time. You better be following His instructions in this time. Because it is coming about in ways that you can't imagine right now. And be warned. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of Jehovah shall be fulfilled. And the woman you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Babylon. Babylon. And there are Christians in Babylon and there are Jews in Babylon and every other religion is in Babylon if you are not following the commandments and instructions of the one true creator God, Jehovah, and his son. And all of that will be destroyed in this time. So come out of her, my people, that you do not partake of her sins and that you do not partake of the plagues that come on her. And the way we do this is through our Passover, Yeshua HaMashiach. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Behold, the days come, says Jehovah, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt, Judah, Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart we're going to continue with this we're going to talk about coming out of Egypt today coming out of spiritual Egypt today coming out of blindness and darkness and false things 
God says many of his people are still in Egypt. But he has made the way out through his son. 